morning, good afternoon everyone, and welcome to the April 25th meeting of the Rotary Club of Des Moines. How's everybody doing today? Yeah, that's wonderful. I'm President Becky Greenwald, and it's great to see all these educators and your friends and families here to celebrate you. Um, did you know that this is also National Volunteer Week? Actually, Volunteer Week started back in 1974 by President Nixon as a special day to celebrate the incredible work that volunteers contributed in all areas across the nation. So we celebrate and appreciate the dedicated service of Rotarians, the work that you do each and every day, every day of the week, every year, and extend an ex extra special thank you today during your week. And now we've got our educators to, uh, to thank today. So we're, we got a lot of good things going on today. But I want to add a Paul Harris, who was the founder of Rotary, famously said, the greatest gift you can give somebody is your time. So that seems so appropriate for Volunteer Week and for educators and everything that you do to lift up our community. So I start off the meetings with a little factoid, a little something about Rotary to help us to remember why we're here as Rotarians. And with so many guests, I can't uh, help but take advantage of the opportunity to share this with you. But education and literacy is one of Rotary International's seven focus areas. And Rotarians know and understand that basic education and literacy is so essential to the success of the other six areas of focus that we work on. So you might be interested to know, in addition to education, we like to focus on championing peace, reducing poverty, fighting disease and improving health, encouraging community and economic development, helping people get access to clean water and sanitation, and protecting our planet and its resources. So what we have going on here is kind of a tale of two foundations. We've got Rotary International, a big overarching organization that's worldwide with hundreds of thousands of members. And then we have our Rotary Club of Des Moines and our very own foundation that funds our, our ability to be able to recognize educators and our graduating seniors. But we understand as Rotarians that uh, educators inspire learning at ages through, through all ages and that uh, we are so uh, indebted to the time and dedication that our educators, especially the ones we're honoring today, have put into uh, building the, the future uh, citizens of our city, state, and country. So we understand that the power of education is to lift families, to modify behavior, create healthy habits, and open minds. And that's why the Rotary Club of Des Moines is so appreciates the service that educators give to our community. And we really look forward to this day every single year. So we are so happy that you're joining us today. And now I would like to invite Bob Bedrill to come forward to give us a moment of inspiration, and then he will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the four way time. Bob. Thank you, President Becky. Today we recognize and honor five educators from the Des Moines Public School System. Last week we recognized and also honored six senior students, one from each of the six Des Moines high schools with an $8,000 scholarship over four years. They inspired us for their academic abilities and their presence of character. Those students recognize those in their lives that helped them on the path to academic achievement and personal excellence. Each of these students thanked the teachers and counselors who believed in them, challenged them to celebrate their achievements within and outside the classroom. Today we are inspired by these teachers and their passion for, for their profession and how they make a difference in, the in their students today and beyond in the last years of the education they pursue. And for they can instill, for they can instill a love of learning and curiosity throughout a lifetime. I want you all to take a moment and think about a teacher who had a profound influence in your life. What was your level in school? And what did that teacher do that created influence in your life? When I say go, please turn to the person on your right and both of you exchange your experience. Go! <laughs>
you very much. Did you hear the level of exchange in the room? <laughs> this is what we will recognize today, the influence of these teachers and their counterparts have on students they serve. I was a beneficiary of a very good education. I remember reading such books as 1984 by Jane Addams. <laughs> there are those in government who want to shape curriculum to more align with their political beliefs. I believe that teachers create a learning environment curriculums that will provide students with a diversity of learning and the ability to form a greater understanding of our history and other subject matters. I would like to close with these quotes on teaching. Teaching, the profession that creates all other professions that was unknown. A good teacher can inspire hope, ignite the imagination, and still a love of learning. Brad Henry. I'm not a teacher, but an awakener, Robert Frost. I never teach my pupils, I only attempt to find the conditions in which they can learn. Albert Einstein. Lastly, a quote from Maria Montessori. The greatest sign of the greatest sign of success for a teacher is being able to say, the children are working as if I did not exist. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the five-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And it is it fun? Now greet each other. Terrians are guests. <laughs> office in Iowa City, a colleague and guest of Susan Judkins, and Nick Turley with the Shirt Partners, colleague and guest of Ann McFarland, and Lauren Oberfeld, who is the daughter of Eric Oberfeld. And we also have Amir Prasada, a former Houston Rotary Club member and guest of Kashan Merchant. So welcome, no, welcome everyone, and thank you. Let's give everyone a big Rotary <laughs> Tell them we welcome them, even though he's not here. <laughs> okay, it's tumbler time. Those little cups on your table. Please consider donating five dollars if you don't have a green sign dollar sign on your name badge. That means you've given uh, a, a year's amount of donations in advance. And even if you do have the green dollar sign, you can always donate more because this goes to our Rotary Club of Des Moines Foundation. And those funds from those tumblers and other gifts from our Rotarians help sponsor our programs and the scholarships that we're uh, giving to our educators today. So as always, all Rotarians, thank you for your continued support. So now we're in the world is Club 27. 
We're club number 27 out of thousands of clubs. We've been around since 1911, and we like to know where our, our members have gone. Well, just last weekend, our district, which is the southern half of Iowa, had its <coughs> district celebration, and I was in uh, Pella with Todd and Joyce Wheeler, and also with Steve and Erna Moraine, and Erna is one of our past district governors. And I want to just let everyone know that District Governor Dennis and Heidi Drager presided over a wonderful, informative celebration with lots of inspiring and interesting speakers. So it was a great day in Pella. And now, it's my honor to introduce and welcome back to the Rotary Club in Des Moines, Superintendent of Des Moines Public Schools, Dr. Ian Roberts, who will give us some remarks today. Thank you, Becky. Thank you for being here. Good afternoon, everyone. It's so good to be here. You know, along my journey as an educator, I too have read many books. Bob, I saw 1984 on the shelf, but I walked right by it. And instead, I chose to read a poem that has become one of my favorites by William Ernest Henley, British poet, and the title is Invictus. Invictus really talks about and captures the essence of what it means to triumph, even in the toughest of times. <clears throat> when I think about the journey that our students who are enrolled in pre-K-12 institutions across this country, certainly here in Des Moines, Iowa, they have so many barriers placed in front of them, and so much that they have to overcome in order for them to be their best selves. But what is clear to me as I reflected on our time together last week as you honored six amazing high school seniors is that the spirit of Invictus, which means to conquer, <coughs> is present in every single classroom, and that spirit manifests itself through the daily execution of strategies by every single teacher. And so to have the honor of standing here before you as you honor some of our outstanding educators is certainly incredibly inspiring. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Teachers, I have had the opportunity to visit many of your classrooms. And I tell people with whom I interact, it is the best part of my job when I can visit classrooms and watch you deliver on your outstanding pedagogical strategies, and watch you take students from where they are to places that they could not have ever imagined. You are truly the heroes in our midst. The final stanza in the poem Invictus says, it matters not how straight to get about charge of punishment and scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Teachers, because of your Invictus spirit, I believe that the 30 plus thousand students in the one public schools, they're in great hands. And I often feel inadequate as I stand to lead you and to serve alongside you because of how amazing you are. And today's celebration by the Rotary Club is just one of those acknowledgments that you are truly in the most noble profession that we can think of. Thank you for your spirit of Invictus. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Good afternoon, Rotarians, Good afternoon. educators, families, friends. This is an amazing meeting and one of the best ones that we have every year, along from the one from last week. Uh, my name is Juan Garcia. I have the honor to serve as the chair of the uh, Educator Award Committee this year. Uh, I'd like to recognize our committee members. Please stand and then you rec be recognized at the end. Uh, first, Mason Powers, our vice chair. 
who will have the honor to do this next year. Stay standing. Uh, Steve Belay, to you. Steve. Uh, Eric Oberfeld, please. Skeet. He doesn't even need a last name. We know it's <laughs> And Paul Johnson, where's Paul? There he is, uh, who serve as our board of directors liaison. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, as committee members, it is so hard to select one educator. We have so many applications, we wanted to get everybody to win, right? Um, so, just a little context as to who we are and uh, how the committee happens. The Educator of the Year Awards are made possible because of your donations to the Rotary Club of Des Moines Foundation. Okay, so thank you for doing that. Your $25 quarterly donation, as well as the weekly, weekly contribution, or the annual 150 Tumblr uh, sticker that you have in your name tag, all go to help the Educator Awards. Thank you, Rotarians, for making this happen. This couldn't happen without your support. Uh, the Educator of the Year has been given out for over 20 years. And after this year, over 100 educators would have been recognized. How amazing is that? Uh, the winners are chosen by the awards committee. Uh, the Moyne Public Schools teachers are nominated by their school principals. Right? So peers, selecting peers for that outstanding work. Nominated educators respond to an application which requires a written narrative describing aspects of how each teacher provides excellence in education. It is difficult, it's a difficult decision for the awards committee as all applicants are deserving of the award. This year, the stipend has increased to $1,500, right? I have worked with many educations in my career and if you give an educator $1,500, they will stretch that penny all the way out <laughs> and they will make magic happen with $1,500. So thank you to our board for approving that increase from $1,000 to $1,500. Uh, they also receive a keepsake plaque that you can display with pride in your office. Uh, the educators will also be featured on a billboard, be on the lookout for this, <laughs> co-sponsored by Lamar Advertising. So people driving around the mall and will see your pretty faces on a huge billboard. So make sure you are tagging the Rotary Club and tweeting, Facebook, everywhere else, and everybody needs to know who you are. This year we're honoring five educators. One of our recipients who know me here uh, but he will join us May 2nd. Uh, I will read a letter of recommendation that I have here in very small print. Um, <laughs> Dear Rotary Club of Des Moines, it is with great pleasure that I nominate Zach Zachary Smith as the Teacher of the Year nominee for the Rotary Club of Des Moines. Zach helped us launch Place Academy in the fall of 2019 and then he quickly pivoted to virtual instruction for our students in the spring of 2020 at the start of the pandemic. He was instrumental in our return to in-person learning in the fall of 2020 and continues to be an invaluable member of the Place Academy team today. Place Academy is an innovative <coughs> partnership between DMPS, DMAG, and the Iowa Department of Education that provides young adults ages 21 to 26 the extra time and support needed to earn their high school equivalence diploma. I'm gonna deviate a little bit here because I have worked in the past when I used to work at ACT with uh, Central Campus, the Academy, helping adult students who you know, are over 18 and they're facing so many barriers to come back and finish that high school diploma. Right, very, very important. So uh, these students have experienced significant personal hardships and obstacles that many of their peers have not faced and they need extra time and support to achieve their diploma that are not currently offered to our programs in the metro area. Place Academy provides an opportunity for young adults who age out of the morning schools to earn their high school equivalency diploma. Uh, this, these students were not able to complete their high school diploma by age 21 due to significant barriers in their lives and often the barriers have increased with age and lack of a high school diploma. Zach is our social studies, English, and multi-language learner teacher of place, as well as the science teacher when needed. He does a lot. Um, Zach provides individualized one-on-one -on -one instruction to the young adults at place, 
delivered in the learning modality that each student prefers, personalized learning. Um, this requires SAC to provide instruction to multiple students who are enrolled in different classes at the same time. He continues to rise to the occasion to ensure that the young adults at place learn in a way that is meaningful and relevant to their lives. While I know you will receive many recommendations for the honor of Teacher of the Year, I do believe Zach is the most worthy of this honor. He works beyond the regular school day to ensure that some of the most marginalized young adults in Des Moines have the opportunity to earn the high school diploma so they can move forward in their lives and have success to further their education or move into a better paying job. SAC deserves this honor. This was submitted by Jennifer Stadler, Place Academy Director. I don't know Zachary, I like the guy. So I'm glad he got the, the honor and uh, so we will hear from him. He will be here May 2nd. Um, now, educators hold a special place in my heart, as you can tell by my Irish accent. I'm an immigrant. I came from Peru 38 years ago without speaking a word of English. It is thanks to educators like the ones we have here today, one, that I speak the language, or try to, and two, that I am where I am. Many, many people help me in my journey to be where I am. And it is thanks to those educators who care, who made me feel like I belong, right? Even though I'm the brown guy from Peru, who's like, what are you doing here type of thing? And they embrace me to get to where I am. So thank you, educators, for everything, everything that you do. Now, I am going to introduce Mitch, uh, Tasha Brown, who has a special introduction. Thanks, everybody. Director of Career and Technical Education for Des Moines, and I also get to oversee Central Campus. Um, I'm also a product of Des Moines Public Schools, so a lot of the comments that were spoken today um, resonate, and it was certainly educators within Des Moines Public that also invested in me and allowed me to be the educator um, and leader that I am in one of the best school districts in, in our state, um, arguably in the country, which is Des Moines Public Schools, um, so it's an honor to be amongst you. I get the pleasure to introduce Dr. Greg Ferrard. I don't know if you all know, but we do have a resident oceanography and marine science expert amongst us in this fine city. He is um, published, he is world renowned. He continues to go on research trips in the summer in places like Fiji. He has also discovered a species of Nautilus that have never um, been discovered before. Um, so he is very much an active scientist, and we are just absolutely fortunate, honored, privileged to have him as a teacher of high school students um, here in Des Moines Public Schools. If you haven't been to Central Campus, um, we might need to schedule a member tour to Central Campus sometime. We'd love to have you all so that you can come and see our classrooms and certainly the aquarium that exists on the third floor of our building with over 150 tanks. Um, millions of dollars in, in sea life that our students care for and, and learn about and cultivate. Um, him and his colleague have helped start a clownfish breeding program. We're looking to begin breeding other fish and selling them to aquariums around the country. Um, the experiences that his students get to come back and share and the work that they get to do in oceanography and marine sciences, not only in the United States, but across the world are all because of the inspiration that they received from their instructor. What I love most about Greg is he's um, incredibly humble, but he is just a light and a bright star for both staff and students within our building. He invests his time, he always goes above and beyond, and within his fantastic adventures and uh, field studies, he's always connecting our students with those scientists from the field. And so he zooms them in and, and has his meetings and conduct his research, and our students all have access to that. Um, which really truly inspires them. So, want to um, welcome and congratulate Dr. Greg Ferrard on um, Teacher of the Year. Thank you so much. Um, this moment is kind of overwhelming. I didn't expect it. I first want to thank the uh, Rotary Club. It's um, you know we don't teach for like awards and 
and such, but it's you know so nice to you know get the recognition. And um, I, I teach marine biology. Um, I teach a science class. Um, I hated science growing up, and I never wanted to be a teacher. So <laughs> um, I just didn't connect with science. And when I was in grad school in, in New York City, I was, I was working in Brooklyn in a high school there, and that was my first experience of working with high school students and just trying to like connect with them. And it was because of that that brought me to Des Moines, um, which was just kind of a flyover state to me at that point. Uh, but I connected with my colleague, Kirk Embry, and learned about this program, learned about Central Campus. And I, I just want students to engage in science with the way that works for them, through art, through culture, through their own personalities, not just scientific papers, not just being in a lab. And um, Central Campus allows, allows me to do that. Um, the, the last person I want to thank is my wife, Karen. Um, she's been with me for, for all of this. It's not tough, or it's not easy, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> so, to, you know, come home and, and hear me complaining sometimes. But um, yeah, this is just a really, really nice moment for me. It just makes me think of all the colleagues back at Central Campus that, that really also deserve this as well. So thank you all very much. and the pride of our staff and our students um, who if they could be here and fill this room they would be um, because it is a collective um, sense of pride for Hannah and her work. Um, she is not only a teacher, a multilingual language learner, she's also a teacher leader, she is a colleague, she is a confidant, she is a best friend um, to many on our staff and um, the work that she does is just incredible. This year, um, we had about 35, 36 or so students who were going to be in our sixth grade classrooms and we wanted to reduce that number to support um, our learners and we had many teachers step up to do that at the beginning of the year and then we were able to transition and change our master schedule so that um, we can not ask teachers to do more because they kind of stopped them at the beginning of the year, um, not knowing they would do that when they left in the spring and many of our teachers said, great, second semester, um, you won't have to teach that class of sixth graders, we figured it out, and um, Hannah decided to stick with it because of the learners and her commitment to the learners in that space. Um, at Good Road, we have a model that we begin each day with, not only with our staff, but also with our students, and it's um, our Good Road Roar is what we call it, what we say and how we say it, what we do and how we do it for the betterment of our community, and Hannah really embodies that. Um, when you walk into her classroom, you can see, you can feel um, just the sense of pride that she um, emotes from students um, and how she supports them, particularly our multilingual language learners. She does not ask them to set aside who they are. Instead, she invites them to bring their cultural, ethnic, and linguistic abilities into the classroom and sees those as strengths um, to support learning um, the English language, um, not as something that needs to be corrected or exchanged. Um, as who they are. And so I am just so proud of her. I can speak forever about her, but I'll invite her to share a few words because um, she's the reason why we're here. Thank you. I'm an English teacher. I had to write it down. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, I have often heard it said that teaching is a work of heart. As you know, teachers do not go into the profession for money or for fame, but rather with the idea that we can make a difference in the lives of our students and in the world. Now, I'm the youngest of eight children, and six of us have chosen teaching as our career paths, and four of them actually married teachers. <laughs> when I was younger, thinking about which occupation I would like to choose, I must confess that my older siblings would often encourage me not to go into the teaching. They found it really rewarding themselves, but they said it can also be thankless and stressful and mentally taxing and did not offer a super high salary. But as a young child, I was like, if that's all true, why are they teachers? As 
as you can see, I did grow up and I became a teacher. And much to my chagrin, I discovered that my siblings were mostly right, which I will never admit to them. <laughs> um, teaching can be thankless and stressful and so on, but I did discover why many teachers, including my siblings, tend to stay in the field of education despite these challenges. Um, to me, teaching is not just an occupation. I truly believe that teaching is a calling. Yes, there can be challenges that get overwhelming at times, but our students can make it all worth it. Each and every one of our students are so amazing. They each offer wonderful gifts and perspectives that shape their learning and the way they see the world. They continuously reach high expectations and even often go beyond. What I find the most rewarding about teaching is that every single year I get to work with a brand new group of amazing middle school students. And I truly love them for who they are and I enjoy helping them develop and share their talents and gifts with the world. They have so much to offer and they eagerly want to show that. Now, as I said, teaching can be challenging. I think the teachers in the room can agree. But I am <coughs> extremely fortunate to work at Goodrell Middle School. I have an amazing leadership, administrative leadership team in Carrie Romo, Sarah Tillinghast, and Patrick Lewis. These amazing humans support and value not only the students, but the teachers as well. They help to ensure that every single one of our students gets a strong and equitable education. They lead our school with truth, sincerity, justice, and goodwill. They work to do not what is easy, but what is fair and equitable for all concerned. They also lead the staff in vital anti-racist work in education that it help us gain resources and knowledge to make sure that every single one of our students gets a high quality and meaningful education. Additionally, they foster a cooperative and supportive community between staff members in our building. I'm honestly telling you, every single teacher in our building has respect and love for our leadership team because we know that they're always gonna put the students and teachers of Goodwill Middle School first. I would like to thank them for showing up for the staff and students every day and building a sense of community in our school. I would also like to thank my family, my siblings, of course, but both my husband, Dan, and my mother, Cheryl, are here with me today. Both of them are my biggest supporters. Dan, thank you for loving and supporting me every day. You never cease to cheer me on, and you always help me see the positives. You are an incredible husband and an amazing father to our two-year-old daughter, Maggie. Mom, you raised a plethora of Iowa teachers. <laughs> and you taught us to look for and expect the best from this world. And if we couldn't find it, we were expected to build it ourselves. That is what I endeavor to bring to my classroom every day for our students. I hope to give them what you gave us and always help them see the amazing people they are, all they can share, and what greatness they can create in this world. I am honored to serve as a DMPS middle school teacher through this job, I've had opportunities to work with incredible students and educators every single day. I myself have grown in my understanding of the world by seeing it through the eyes of my students. I like to thank my coworkers at Goodwill Middle School, shout out, uh, for always being supportive of one another and helping all of us to grow and become the best educators we can be. Finally, but certainly not least, I would like to thank the Rotary Club. Your leadership in the community is invaluable. You help create lasting and positive change in this city. Like the amazing students at our school, you bring different cultures and perspectives to different issues, and you serve the community with passion. Thank you for seeing teachers and students for their worth. I am incredibly honored to receive this award, and I cannot thank you enough for your recognition and your contribution to my classroom, our students, and our community as a whole. Thank you. Congratulations, Hannah, and you're a tough act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Julie Cruz, and I have the privilege of leading Willard Elementary School here in Des Moines, um, East Side Pride by the Fairgrounds. Um, I am sorry, I wear my heart on my sleeve every day. I am so blessed for the last um, 14 years to go to work every day with the most amazing teachers and students and families 
and I really try not hard, hard not to get emotional. But I just am truly, truly blessed. Um, our school is just such an amazing place with the most incredible, dedicated teachers. And today I have the privilege of um, introducing to you not one, but two educators of the year from our staff. So I feel very, very blessed. And I'm very grateful to the Rotary Club <laughs> for um, allowing us to recognize these educators who make such a difference in the lives of our kids. So to start off first, um, I would like to present to you Sherry Tompkins. Uh, Sherry um, is a second grade teacher at Willard and Sherry is incredibly deserving of the Rotary Club Educator of the Year Award and I'm so honored and proud that I get to present her to you today. Sherry began her career in education instructing hearing impaired students while she was in Colorado for about six years and then her family came to Des Moines and in 1999 Des Moines Public Schools was beyond blessed to be able to have Sherry come on board. Sherry started out as a special education teacher at Willard and um, has been there the whole time that I've been there and beyond that. Um, so I recognize when I started Sherry's amazing gift to reach all learners. And as much as I did not want to pull her out of the special education classroom because those students need the best teachers, I knew that she could have a broader impact on a classroom of teachers. And so I asked Sherry if she could please consider teaching second grade. And to my amazement and joyment, and, or joyment, she, <laughs> joy, she said yes. So Sherry has been a second grade teacher uh, since 2012. Uh, Sherry builds the most incredible amazing connections with both her students um, and our families as well as our Willard staff. She's an amazing leader on our Willard team and she has very, very high expectations for all of our learners and our kids make the most amazing growth because of the work she does. And not only does Sherry own her own classroom of kids, she owns the data of her grade level and she lifts her grade level team members up and encourages them and believes that they have the skills and abilities to reach their kids. And so our second grade typically make the most amazing growth because of your leadership, Sherry. Um, she models what it means to be a lifelong learner. If uh, Sherry has many years of experience, as you can see, and if there's ever an opportunity to do an instructional uh, observation or um, take a class or uh, you know do a book study, Sherry is one of our very first staff who step up and is willing to learn. And so even though she has all these amazing, incredible, wonderful years of experience, and she is beyond the most incredible teacher, she still knows that she can learn and grow and become even better than she already is. So it is my pride and joy to be able to introduce to you Sherry Tompkins. My name is Sherry Tompkins and I teach second grade at Willard Elementary. To begin, I'm truly honored to be here and thank you for the Rotary Club for this wonderful recognition. I am truly humbled. Congratulations to all my fellow educators who are receiving this award today, who have received it in the past, who will continue to receive it because of your generosity. To my current and co-workers, Past co-workers who show up each day to give access to all learners, thank you. To the entire staff at Willard Elementary, you are my second family. Thank you for your caring, your support, your determination, and for your love of students and families. My husband Larry is here. Thank you for being my biggest cheerleader. 
your belief in me has made me a better person, a better mother, and a better teacher. You have cut endless miles of lamination, <laughs> filled my county jars, <laughs> made literacy and math stations for me. You flooded my classroom with supplies, books, coats, backpacks, gloves, holiday gifts, and food baskets. You have the biggest heart, and I'm so grateful that you share it with me every day. To my children, Alex and Evan, thank you for allowing me to be your first teacher. And I hope the lessons we've taught you stay in your heart. There's some debate as who says this quote isn't from Mark Twain or Confucius, but I've always told I always told the boys, find a job you love, and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Alex is here to share this honor with me today, and he's found his passion as a math educator at Hoover High School. Alex, you're a role model for these young adults, and I'm wishing you a continued success with your teaching career. Our other son, Evan, he lives in Denver, Colorado, and he's found his passion with working with the homeless. He is an advocate for those in need, and it's truly inspiring. And I wanna thank the teachers that have helped them along their way as well. To my parents, Bernie and Marilyn Walshman, they installed in all of us five children the importance of education, and thank you for their sacrifices they made for us to send us to college. I would not be here without their support and every day I work to honor their memories and to make them proud most importantly thank you to the students and the teachers that I have the honor of being their teacher they are the reason I show up every day and they are my heroes no one does this job on their own we stand on his shoulders and those who give us support. To my building principal, Julie Cruz. Thank you, Julie. You have reinvigorated my love for teaching at the same time when you've transitioned me from special education to general education classroom. I'm always appreciative of your faith and your trust in me, and I'm helping me learn to continually to grow. So thank you very much, Julie. My teaching career started with my grandmother, Eunice Laughlin. She taught in a one-room schoolhouse on the plains of Kansas. She now has a granddaughter, me, who's an educator, and she has two grandchildren, great-grandchildren, who are educators, and in May, she's going to have a great-great-grandchild in education. So the legacy in education is, runs deep in my family, and it's going to continue. The other day, I heard our granddaughter say, Papa, when I grow up, I want to be a teacher just like Daddy and Mimi. So our future is in good hands. The legacy, my class is called the Peacemaker class. And our motto is always do the right thing when no one is watching. This aligns perfectly to the Rotary Club's mission of providing services to others, promoting high ethical standards, and advancing the understanding, goodwill, and peace through its fellowship of business, professional, and community, leader, le, community, community leaders. Isn't that what we all want in our communities? This is what we seek to attain in our classrooms every single day. I am deeply appreciative of the work that the Rotary Club of Des Moines does to make the community a better place to learn, to live, and to grow. Please continue this important work of recognizing and celebrating the wonderful and invaluable work that teachers do. Thank you again for honoring me for a job that I love, where I have never worked a day in my life. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. You are so incredibly deserving. So, moving on to our next nominee and recipient, I am truly, truly honored to present to you in just a minute. Uh, this is Julie Vitek, who is a multilingual learner teacher at Willard. 
I still remember the day that um, I talked to Julie on the phone and she accepted a transfer to Willard. I remember I was at the Adventure Lane campground and I had just heard the most amazing things about what an incredible teacher Julie is and was at that time. And I had talked to a principal that had worked with her and she said that Willard would be so lucky if Julie Vitek choose to come to Willard. And she said yes, and I was beyond elated. So Julie is truly a gifted educator as well, and she has been in education for 33 amazing, wonderful years. So um, she, during that time, she has just touched the lives of countless students in many different ways. She's been a reading recovery teacher and a multilingual learner teacher. And Juan, if you, uh, if you would be a student at Willard, you would feel truly blessed like you shared earlier to have a wonderful teacher such as Mrs. Vitek um, instructing you and caring for you and nurturing you um, on your path to uh, learn English and to learn how to do school um, in America. And um, Julie just makes such an incredible difference for our students and really um, <coughs> just leaves them in such a wonderful way and our kids go on to become so successful because of her work. Julie, um, her gift is that she truly takes the time to get to know her students, their cultural background, their experiences, and their unique needs. So many of our kids come uh, to Willard who they don't speak a word of English and it is truly incredible uh, to see the work that she does um, to help those students to learn English, which is an enormous task in itself, and learn how to do school and um, just be a good citizen. And Julie teaches them all of those things and more. Um, our English language learner, multilingual learner students at Willard typically and regularly outperform other English language learner students throughout the district because of the work of Julie Vitek. Um, she just takes what they know and makes learning uh, meaningful and relevant to their own unique lives and experiences. And I'm beyond blessed once again to present Julie Vitek this time as the recipient of the Rotary Award. <laughs> Thank you, Rotary Club of Des Moines, for such an honorable recognition. The gift of money for my classroom, today's delicious lunch, and a personalized plaque. This club has been around since 1911. The mission of this not-for-profit worldwide organization has values that is much needed in our world today. I thank you for doing this important work. I have to say that I was a little bit apprehensive about writing this speech, but then my dad said, all you can do, honey, is write from your heart. That is what I did. Thanks, Dad. In the past year, my family and I moved. We decided to downsize. And I remember one realtor saying, a person doesn't pick a house, the house picks them. This indeed did happen to us, but at the time it made no sense. After finding out I was chosen to receive this award and then doing some reflecting, it became clear. I did not choose this career, it chose me. You see, I never intended on being a teacher. I wasn't a little girl who's played school in the basement with her brother or sister. I never dreamt of being a teacher from a young age. I always thought I would follow in my mother's footsteps and become a nurse. I'm shaking a little bit. <laughs> I can say without a doubt, this career path was my calling. Teaching isn't easy, it's frankly hard work. 
but I can't think of any other job where I would be fulfilled as much as I am when I am teaching. The educational advances, the growth students make, the light bulbs you see go off during a productive struggle are all great parts of teaching. But I would say my favorite part is building lasting relationships with students and families. Willard is a great place to teach and be a part of. I have always felt supported and appreciated by Ms. Cruz. My coworkers are hands down some of the best and hardest working educators I have ever worked with. Getting this award with Mrs. Tompkins is the cherry on the top. I couldn't think of a better educator to get this award with. I'm humbled, touched, and will be forever grateful. I saved the best for last. I would like to introduce my family. Here with me today is my husband, Chris. Chris, who has been a lifelong supporter of my career. When we first got married, I worked as a special ed associate at Douglas Elementary. He encouraged and supported me going back to college to get my bachelor's degree, and then later on to get my master's degree. He has helped me on numerous occasions with anything electronical, <laughs> cutting out lamination, or anything else I might need done. You and Larry sound a lot alike. <laughs> um, he has never complained about the money I spend for school and on students. Thank you, honey. Our 25-year-old son, Connor, lives and works in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Our daughter, Jenna, is here with us today. All three of them have made sacrifices with me working on the weekends and in the evenings. Both of my parents modeled a good work ethic, working hard to provide for our family. I, too, work hard each day.